In this video, I'm going to share with you a simple linear regression um, and we'll be using Microsoft Excel to do this. Now, in doing regression, okay, there's a certain mechanism that is working and the mechanism here is referred to ordinary least squares. Um, in a short form, we'll call it OLS. And I'm just going to share with you briefly so that you have an idea of how regression is being done in Excel before we proceed to Excel. So, here you can see that we have, let's say, consumption. Okay, and consumption equals to, we have beta 0. Beta 0 here is the intercept. So, if you look into this line here, here is the intercept. And we plus B1, yeah, which is the slope. So, this is the slope here. Yeah, and we have YD here, assuming it's disposable income. Yeah. So what are we doing in this model here? Yeah. Let's say we have two individuals and we have recorded their consumption and their income. So we call this actual values. Okay, the orange color dots over here. Yeah. Now, if we're going to come up with a predictive model, we need to find a fitted line. Yeah. So if we find the best fitted line, it will go through in the middle over here. Yeah, between the two points over here, the orange color points. So for the first point here, you can see that this was the actual point. The predicted point here is 6. For the second point, the actual point was here, 5. And the predicted point is over here, 10. So can you see there's a certain variation, yeah, difference between the predicted and the actual value. Yeah, so the difference here, yeah, between the actual value and the predicted value is called the observed error, or we call this residual. So what OLS is trying to do, yeah, OLS will find the best fitted line, okay, that minimizes the measures of these errors, okay. So you can already have an idea. The smaller is the error between, yeah, over here you can see between 8 and 6 here, which is 8 is actual and 6 is predicted. Smaller is the error, the observed error, the better will be line, the more precise the line will be, yeah. So therefore, when we run regression, yeah, there is an ordinary least square mechanism method, yeah, incorporated where... What we are trying to do, we are trying to minimize the errors, yeah, which is the observed error, which is the difference between the actual value and predicted value so that we can get the best fitted line. Yeah. So over here, I have a hypothetical data. So you can see it's the data for sales of headscarf. So I have my customers, assuming I'm having a boutique. I have their income, I've recorded their income, and I've recorded the amount of sales that they have done in my boutique. Yeah. So now what I want to do is that I want to run a simple linear regression. So how, I, how do I do that? Yeah. So from the home menu, I'll move to data. Yeah. I'll go to data analysis and I will click on a regression. Okay. Now, I need to put input y range, yeah? So the y here is the dependent variable. So in this case here, my dependent variable here is going to be the sales, yeah? So I'll select sales. And then I'll put in input x range, which is my independent variable, yeah? So I select the data. Next, what I want to do is, yeah, okay, confidence interval, 95%, fine. Yeah, we are assuming that our significant level is 0 0.05. And I'll also want to select where do I want the output range to be. Yeah, I want the output range to be over here. Yeah, we will untick the rest. Yeah, and we'll come back to this later. We click OK. Yeah, so I've actually obtained an input like this. Yeah, so let's try to examine this data. 
So what I've done, yeah, I've changed all the data to only three decimal points so that it's clearer for us to see the data. Yeah. Now I have highlighted some points here. Yeah, I've highlighted R square. I've highlighted standard error. And then in the ANOVA table, I've highlighted the uh, F statistics, the P value for F, D coefficients, and the p value for the coefficients and the upper and the lower and the upper yeah, values okay of the uh, um, coefficients as well so this is the important data that you need to interpret once you have generated an output table yeah so what we are going to do now is that we are going to interpret all this data one by one so first we will look into r squared yeah now r squared is also known as coefficient of determination yeah so what information does r squared provide to us yeah r squared okay shows the variation in the dependent variable explained by the independent variable yeah so we want to see how much variation okay in the dependent variable is explained by the independent variable so in our case just now here yeah the independent variable was income and the dependent variable was sales so we want to see how much variation in the sales is explained by the income for the r squared value okay it should be between 0 or 1 yeah if it's going to be zero, it means there is no relationship between the two variables, the dependent and independent. Yeah. Now, if the value is going to be equal to one, yeah, this will give you an idea that we have got the best fitted line. That means all the variables are there on the fitted line. Okay, and we can say that the um, um, independent variable, yeah, explains the dependent variable 100%. Uh, okay, it's a perfect fit. So what we got for the data just now, the R square value is 0 0.901. So what does this say? So we can say approximately 90% of variation in sales is explained by consumer income. Uh, so income explains yeah for my boutique consumer income explains 90 percent of my sales in my boutique so how about the extra 10 more percent so it means that there are another 10 percent okay for example probably my advertising uh, my customer service uh, my loyalty program there are so many other factors as well that influence my sales uh, which is not taken into account over here why because we only looked into income okay but however by looking into here we can see that income explains a major portion of variation in my sales the next aspect that we want to look into yeah it's the standard error we call it as the se yeah is the variability of the observed value from the predicted value yeah uh, if you have looked into my previous videos, yeah, uh, we have actually uh, predicted okay, uh, the uh, values and even I've mentioned earlier. Yeah, so what is the difference? Because when we predict, there is a difference yeah, between the actual value and the predicted value. So if the difference is large, yeah, then the standard error will be also large. So a large standard error error indicates what it indicates that your actual value is very far from your predicted value therefore your data is scattered further from your trend line uh, okay but let's see if your standard error is small it means all the data points are much more clustered or nearer to your trend line okay so that's the information that standard error provides you so the next test that we have to do is f test. Now, this is to test the significance of the regression. That we want, we want to do a joint hypothesis test, which we want to test the entire model here. Yeah. So, what will be the hypothesis here? Yeah. Our null hypothesis: beta one equals to zero. Uh, 
Okay, the independent variable has no effect on the dependent variable. Yeah, so you can see. Let's look into. We have sales here. Okay, equals to beta zero plus beta one and your disposable income. Yeah, this is the regression that we did just now. So this is what we got. Okay, in terms of our coefficients, sales equals to negative one eight six point eight four seven plus zero point one two seven. YD, which is your disposable income. So can you see, this is your beta, beta 1, 0 0.127. So if your beta 1 here is equal to 0, so if the value here is 0, so 0 times your disposable income, it means that disposable income has no influence on the sales. Okay, so it means that a model doesn't exist. Yeah, because income has nothing to do with your sales volume. Yeah. And for the alternate hypothesis, we say beta 1 is not equal to 0. The independent variable explains some variation in the dependent variable. Okay? So, how do we quantify this thing? Okay? We have to look at the p-value okay, for the F statistics. So, if the p-value is smaller than the alpha, which is 0 0.05, then we reject the null. And if the p-value is greater than the alpha, we fail to reject. Let's look into the data that we generated just now. This is the ANOVA table yeah, that I've actually got from the output just now. So this is the data, yeah, the output important for your F-test, yeah, which is from the ANOVA, it's the joint hypothesis test. So we can see over here, where in this case here, yeah, as we only have one variable, yeah, therefore it's going to be only one variable over here. Yeah, that's why we only have B1. Yeah. So in this case here, you can see that the P value, yeah, the P value for your F statistics is almost zero. Yeah. So what does this zero indicate? P value less than the alpha level, which is 0 0.05. Yeah, therefore we reject the null hypothesis. So what is the decision that we have made? P-value for the F-test is almost zero, which is less than the level of significance, 0 0.05. Therefore, the null hypothesis is rejected. We conclude consumer income is a statistically significant variable in explaining the variation in the sales. Okay, so it means that we already know for the entire model, okay, the model is significant and we know that income, okay, imposes certain effect on the dependent variable which is sales. Now, earlier what we have done is that we have tested the entire model. Now, we want to test the regression coefficients. We want to test our betas, okay, our coefficients one by one. Yeah, so we have our beta 0, we have our beta 1. Yeah. So to test the coefficients, what we do is that okay, we will use the t-test. And this is the formula here okay, to calculate the t statistics, which is beta 1 minus 0 divided by the standard error. Yeah. I'm not going to be showing you for beta 0. Yeah, you can see at the value just now. Yeah, usually, um, we will be more concerned about the independent variables. Yeah? So, the null hypothesis is tested by setting B1 equal to 0. Yeah? So, the same thing. For the null, beta 1 equals to 0. And for the alternate, beta 1 is not equal to 0. Yeah? So let's look into the output that we generated just now. So this is the output that we need, yeah, which is the next output after the ANOVA table. Yeah. So we have two coefficients. We have the intercept, this value here, which is our beta 0. And we have our income, which is our beta 1. 
So this is our coefficient values, yeah? Now, usually a standard practice, what you will do is that before even though you talk about your R square, even before you talk about your F test, first you will come and see whether your coefficients are significant or not, yeah? Because if your coefficients are not significant, then it's no point talking about the entire model at all, yeah? So usually you will always go and check for your T test first, okay? You'll check your coefficients first. So, the T statistics is already given, okay? You don't have to compute, but this is the formula. Let's say for beta 1, which is income. So, beta 1 is 0 0.127, you minus with 0, you divide with the standard error here, 0 0.009, you will actually get this T statistics value, okay? But in this case here, you don't have to compute. Why? Because the value is already given to you. Same goes to beta 0. Now, in order to make decision, we look into their p-values. So you see, both the p-values are almost to zero. Okay, so the p-values are less than 0 0.05. Therefore, we reject the null. Now, another way yeah, to test your coefficients, you can use the confidence interval. In the same table yeah, that you got your coefficients, towards the end, you'll have your confidence interval, the lower 90% and the upper 90%. Yeah? So testing the regression coefficient using the confidence interval, again, the hypothesis is the same. Your beta 1, beta one equals to 0, yeah? and for your alternate, beta 1 is not equal to 0. So how do you quantify this information here? Okay? So you see, okay, the confidence interval do not include a 0. So you see, Let's say for this coefficient, okay, for the intercept, negative 184.847, look at the lower and the upper. There is no zero in between. It's just within the negative, okay? Let's look into the income. It's 0 0.127. What is the lower? 0 0.109. Upper is 0 0.145. There is no zero in between. Uh, okay, so it means that the lower and the upper does not straddle between a zero. Okay, so that's what we want because we don't want the betas to be zero, right? So therefore, okay, within this upper, the lower and the upper, there should not be a zero. So the confidence interval do not include a zero. Therefore, both beta zero and beta one are statistically different from zero. Yeah, so this is what we will conclude yeah so these are the important okay aspects of the simple linear regression that you must interpret and you must look into in order to see whether your model is strong enough yeah and whatever your model is predicting okay it's actually predicting wisely okay and we have proven when we say wisely it means that we have we have proven statistically yes okay in our case here we are talking about what our dependent variable here is sales and okay, our independent variable is income. So technically, income yeah, is one of the predictors over here when we talk about sales. Yeah? So look out for the third part, yeah, which will cover on outliers, linearity and test for normality yeah, using Microsoft Excel.